Row 1. Text, Notepad Window, Text Editor, Editing. Blank. Cap are selected. Blank. Remember this is not teaching man teacher. It is useful for recalling when exam coming man student. Just close eyes eye and listen. Based on G scheme for electronics engineering group. Subject, Advanced Communication System, 17656. These are mostly important questions which is always repeat, form top. To end it reduce repeated changes. X question 1 is more important than 2 in notes. And note warning sign warning sign that this is not all chapter. Download link is below. One. Advanced Communication Sysidem Chapter Four. Dot answer. One. Define the term orbit, look angle, footprint, station keeping, elevation angle, azimuth angle, elevation angle. WRT satellite. ANS definition. Two M. Orbit is a trajectory that is periodically repeated. While the path followed by the motion of an artificial satellite around Earth is an orbit. Or Satellites travel around the Earth along predetermined slash predefined repetitive paths called orbits. Look angle, to orient an Earth station antenna towards a satellite, so that transmission and reception can be maximized, it is necessary to know the elevation and azimuth angle. These are called as look angles. Azimuth angle and elevation angle are jointly referred to as the antenna look angle. Footprint. The geographical representation of a satellite antenna radiation pattern is called footprint. The footprint of a satellite is the Earth area that the satellite can receive from and transmitted to. Station keeping. The process of the firing the rocket underground control to maintain or adjust the orbit is referred to as station keeping. Once the satellite is in the orbit, the forces acting on it tends to keep it in place. If the satellite speed and height during launch are accurately controlled, the satellite will enter it in the proper orbit and remains there. Elevation angle. Elevation angle is the vertical angle formed between the direction of travel of an electromagnetic wave radiated from an earth station antenna pointing directly toward a satellite and the horizontal plane. Or It is the angle subtended between the line of sight joining the Earth station antenna, and the satellite, and the horizontal plane. Azimuth angle Azimuth is the horizontal angular distance from a reference direction, either the southern or northernmost point of the horizon. Azimuth angle is defined as the horizontal pointing angle of the Earth station antenna. For navigation purposes, azimuth angle is usually measured in clockwise direction in degrees from true north. However for satellite Earth stations in the northern hemisphere, and satellite vehicles in geosynchronous orbits, azimuth angle is generally referenced to true south. Elevation angle Elevation angle is the vertical angle formed between the direction of travel of electromagnetic wave radiated from an Earth station antenna pointing directly towards a satellite and horizontal plane. 2. Advanced Communication Sysidem Chapter 4. Answer The smaller the elevation angle, the greater the distance a propagated wave must pass through Earth's atmosphere. If the angle of elevation is too small, and the wave travels through Earth's atmosphere is too long, the wave degrades the transmission quality. 
2. What is uplink and downlink frequency? Give reason for difference in uplink and downlink frequency. ANS, 02 marks for definition and 02 marks for reason. Uplink frequency. The communication between Earth station transmitter towards satellite is known as uplink frequency. Uplink of satellite is the frequency at which the Earth station is transmitting the signal and satellite receiving it. Uplink frequency range equals 5.9 GHz to 6.4 GHz downlink frequency. The communication between satellite towards Earth station receiver is known as downlink frequency. Downlink frequency of satellite is the frequency at which the satellite is transmitting the signal and Earth station receiving it. Downlink frequency range equals 3.7 GHz to 4.2 GHz. Reasons 1. Same antenna is used for transmission and reception. 2. The uplink and downlink bands are separated in frequency to prevent oscillations within the satellite amplifier while simultaneously transmission and reception. Moreover low frequency band is used on the downlink to exploit the lower atmospheric losses thereby minimizing satellite power amplifier requirements. 3. Illustrate how telemetry tracking and command system is used in satellite. ANS, 2M diagram and 2M explanation. 3. Advanced Communication Sysidem Chapter 4. Answer Telemetry Tracking and Command, TTNC, subsystem. These systems are partly on the satellite and partly at the Control Earth Station. They support the functions of the spacecraft management. The main functions of a TTC system are to monitor the performance of all satellite subsystems and transmit the monitored data to the satellite control center via a separate telemetry link. To support the determination of orbital parameters. To provide a source to Earth station for tracking. To receive commands from the control center for performing various functions of the satellite. Typical functions include O to correct the position and attitude of the satellite. O to control the antenna pointing and communication system configuration to suit current traffic requirements. O to operate switches on the spacecraft. Telemetry, it collects data from all sensors on the satellite and send to the controlling Earth station. The sighting device is used to maintain spacecraft altitudes are also monitored by telemetry. At a controlling Earth station using computer telemetry data can be monitored and decode. And status of any system on satellite can be determined and can be controlled from Earth station tracking by using velocity and acceleration sensors. On spacecraft the orbital position of satellite can be detected from Earth station. For accurate and precise result number of Earth stations can be used. Four, draw block diagram of satellite subsystem and explain working of any one subsystem. ANS. Four. Advanced communication system chapter four dot answer. Fig. Block diagram of satellite subsystem one telemetry tracking and command TTNC subsystem. These systems are partly on the satellite and partly at the control Earth station. They support the functions of the spacecraft management. The main functions of a TTC system are to monitor the performance of all satellite subsystems and transmit the monitored data to the satellite control center via a separate telemetry link. To support the determination of orbital parameters. To provide a source to Earth station for tracking. To receive commands from the control center for performing various functions of the satellite. Typical functions include, to correct the position and attitude of the satellite. To control the antenna pointing and communication system configuration to suit current traffic requirements. To operate switches on the spacecraft. Telemetry. It collects data from all sensors on the satellite and send to the controlling Earth. 
station. The sighting device is used to maintain spacecraft altitudes are also monitored by telemetry. At a controlling Earth station using computer telemetry data can be monitored and decode. And status of any system on satellite can be determined and can be controlled from Earth station tracking by using velocity and acceleration sensors. On spacecraft the orbital position of satellite can be detected from Earth station. For accurate and precise result number of Earth stations can be used. Or 2. Propulsion subsystem. Propulsion subsystem is the reaction control subsystem carried by the satellite in the geostationary orbit so as to generate forces on it whenever needed. It moves satellite to its assigned position in orbit, to maintain in that position, station keeping, and to maintain the direction of spin axis and attitude control. Usually propulsion subsystem has three units. I low thrust, 10 to 3 to 20 N, actuators, Reaction Control System, RCS, 2, High Thrust, 400 to 50,000 N, Motor, Apogee Kick Motor, AKM, or Apogee Boost Motor, ABM, which provides velocity increment to inject satellite into geostationary orbit from transfer orbit Apogee. 3, Perigee Kick Motor, PKM, which provides velocity increments required to inject the satellite into the transfer orbit. 5. Advanced Communication Sysidem Chapter 4. Answer Low Thrust Actuators, RCS, are of much importance as these are responsible for keeping the satellite in orbit with its perfect attitude till its life end. They are either chemical or electrical thrusters. Or 3. Antenna Subsystem Antenna on board serves as an interface between the Earth on the ground and various satellite subsystems, or, 4, power subsystem. This system provides the necessary DC power to the satellite. All communication satellites derive their electrical power from solar cells. There is also a battery backup facility used during launch and eclipses. The batteries are of sealed nickel-cadmium type, and have good reliability and long life. Or, 5. Communication Subsystems It is a major component of the communication satellite, and the remainder of the spacecraft is there solely to support it. It consists of, I, microwave antennas, and 2. As set of receiver and transmitter units referred to as transponders. The antenna system is used to receive signals from and transmit signals to the ground stations in the coverage area. The antenna used range from dipole type antennas, where omnidirectional characteristics are required to the highly directional antennas, the paraboloidal reflector being the most common, required for telecommunication purposes and TV relay and broadcast. The transponders amplify and retransmit the incoming signals, 6, Attitude, and Orbit Control System, ACOS. This subsystem provides stabilization of the satellite and controls its orbit. It fires jet thrusters to perform attitude adjustments and station keeping man over that keep the satellite in its original orbital position with correct orientation. 5. Right uplink and downlink frequencies for C-band, X-band, Ku-band and Ka-band. Each band of frequency 1M uplink and downlink. Band name uplink frequency downlink frequency. C5.9 to 6.43.7 to 4.2. X7.9 to 8.47.25 to 7.75. Ku14 to 14.511.7 to 12.2. Ka27.5 to 3017 to 20. 6. Advanced Communication Sysidem Chapter 4. Answer
6. Illustrate the block diagram of communication channel subsystem used in satellite communication ANS. Diagram 2M, Explanation 2M. 1. In this transponder only a single frequency translation process takes place 2. First uplink frequency signal is picked up by the receiving antenna and is routed to LNA, low noise amplifier, 3. The signal is very weak at this point, so LNA amplifies the signal 4. Once the signal is amplified, it is translated in correct frequency by mixer. 5. The output of mixer is then amplified again and fed to band pass filter, BPF1, 6. BPF1 allows only a desired downlink signal of 4 GHz 7. At last, the downlink signal is amplified by high power amplifier, HPA, usually TWT, traveling wave tube, 8. Again output of BPF2 is fed to the downlink antenna 9. If common antenna is used for transmission or reception, then diplexer is used to share the antenna. Or One, first uplink signal is received by the receiving antenna. Two, LNA amplified the received signal. Three, amplified signal first fed to first mixer, one. Four, the mixer one translates the received signal frequency into intermediate frequency, typically 70 and 150 megahertz. If output is fed to an if amplifier. Seven. Advanced Communication Sysidem Chapter 4. Answer 5. The output of IF amplifier is fed to another mixer 2. 6. The mixer 2 translates the signal to the output frequency. 7. BPF 1 filters the output signal and eliminates the unwanted output. 8. HPA increases the output signal level. 9. Again output signal is passed through BPF2 to filter out the harmonics etc. 10. At last, transmitting antenna sends the signal over the downlink. 11. This transponder provides greater flexibility in filtering and amplification. 7. Explain advantages of satellite communication for points. ANS. Broadcast property, wide coverage area. Satellites, by virtue of their very nature, are an ideal means of transmitting information over vast geographical areas. This broadcasting property of satellites is fully exploited in point to multipoint networks and multipoint interactive networks. The broadcasting property is one of the major plus points of satellites over terrestrial networks, which are not so well suited for broadcasting applications. Wide bandwidth, high transmission speeds and large transmission capacity. Over the years, satellites have offered greater transmission bandwidths, and hence more transmission capacity and speeds as compared to terrestrial networks. However, with the introduction of fiber optic cables into terrestrial cable networks, they are now capable of providing transmission capabilities comparable to those of satellites. Geographical flexibility, independence of location. Unlike terrestrial networks, satellite networks are not restricted to any particular configuration. Within their coverage area, satellite networks offer an infinite choice of routes, and hence they can reach remote location shaving rudimentary or non-existent terrestrial networks. This feature of satellite networks makes them particularly attractive to third world countries and countries having difficult geographical terrains and unevenly distributed populations. Easy installation of ground stations. Once the satellite has been launched. Installation and maintenance of satellite earth stations is much simpler than establishing a terrestrial infrastructure, which requires an extensive ground construction plan. This is particularly helpful in setting up temporary services. Moreover, one fault on the terrestrial communication link can put the entire link out of service, which is not the case with satellite networks. Uniform Service Characteristics Satellites provide a more or less uniform service within their coverage area, better known as a footprint. 
This overcomes some of the problems related to the fragmentation of service that result from connecting network segments from. 8. How power is generated in satellite. Describe how it is distributed to other subsystem of satellite. 8. Advanced Communication Sysidem Chapter 4. Answer. ANS 2M Diagram 2M Explanation Solar Panels Supply the Electrical Power for the Satellite. They drive regulators and distribute DC power to all other subsystems. The main component of the satellite is power subsystem. This system provides the necessary DC power to the satellite. All communication satellites derive their electrical power from solar cells. There is also a battery backup facility used during launch and eclipses. The batteries are of sealed nickel cadmium type and have good reliability and long life. Everything on board operates electrically. Solar cells are large arrays of photocells connected in various series and parallel circuits as DC source. Solar panels are capable of generating many kilowatts. All solar panels always be pointed towards the sun. Solar panels generate a direct current that is used to operate the various components of satellite. DC power is used to charge the batteries which provides dot C. Current to component of satellite when solar panels are not properly positioned. Voltage regulators are used to power individual electronic circuits. Some components like TWT amplifier in transponder requires very high DC voltage to operate, so DC to DC converter is used to raise the level of low voltages to high voltage. 9. Advanced Communication Sysidem Chapter 4. Answer. 9. List different types of orbits of satellite. Types of orbit satellite. 2M. Based on orientation of the orbital plane. 1. Equatorial orbit 2. Polar orbit 3. Inclined orbit. Based on distance of the orbit from the Earth's surface. 1. Low Earth orbit 2. Medium Earth Orbit 3 High Earth Orbit, or GEO Based on eccentricity of the Orbit 1 Circular Orbit 2 Elliptical Orbit 10. Define Geostationary Orbit and Geostationary Satellite ANS, each correct definition, 2 marks, Geostationary Orbit the orbit in which the satellite completes one revolution around Earth in 24 hours the orbit is called as geostationary orbit. Geostationary satellite, the satellite that uses geostationary orbit is called as geostationary satellite. 11. Describe the antenna used in satellite. ANS, 2M, Diagram and 2M, Explanation Note. Any one should be considered antennas receive the uplink signal and transmit to downlink signals. In addition they provide single link for the satellite telemetry, command and ranging systems, which in conjunction with attitude control subsystem provides beacon tracking signals for precise pointing of the antenna towards the earth coverage areas. The design of satellite antenna is conditioned by the required coverage. It should be remembered that antennas are the one of the key elements in a satellite communication system, since their gain values directly determine the amount of received power. Types of antenna system use in satellite communication parabolic antenna. 10. Advanced Communication Sysidem Chapter 4. Answer. A parabolic antenna is a high-gain reflector antenna used for radio, television, and data communications, and also for radiolocation, radar, on the UHF, and and SHF parts of the parts of the electromagnetic spectrum. The relatively short wavelength of electromagnetic, radio, energy at these frequencies allows reasonably sized reflectors to exhibit the very desirable highly directional response for both receiving and transmitting. 
A typical parabolic antenna consists of a parabolic reflector illuminated by a small feed antenna. The reflector is a metallic surface formed into a paraboloid of revolution and, usually, truncated in a circular rim that forms the diameter of the antenna. This paraboloid possesses a distinct focal point by virtue of having the reflective property of parabolas in that a point light source at this focus produces a parallel light beam aligned with the axis of revolution. The feed antenna is placed at the reflector focus. This antenna is typically a low-gain type such as a half-wave dipole or a small waveguide horn. In more complex designs, such as the Cassegrain antenna, a subreflector is used to direct the energy into the parabolic reflector from a feed antenna located away from the primary focal point. The feed antenna is connected to the associated radio frequency, RF, transmitting or receiving equipment by means of a coaxial cable. Or Horn antenna a horn antenna, or microwave horn, is an antenna that consists of a flaring metal waveguide shaped like a horn to direct radio waves in a beam. Horns are widely used as antennas at UHF and microwave frequencies, above 300 MHz. They are used as feeders, called feed horns, for larger antenna structures such as parabolic antennas, as standard calibration antennas to measure the gain of other antennas, and as directive antennas for such devices as radar guns, automatic door openers. 11. Advanced Communication Sysidem Chapter 4. Answer. And microwave radiometers. Their advantages are moderate directivity, low standing wave ratio, SWR, broad bandwidth, and simple construction and adjustment. In order to function properly, a horn antenna must be a certain minimum size relative to the wavelength of the incoming or outgoing electromagnetic field. If the horn is too small or the wavelength is too large, the frequency is too low, the antenna will not work efficiently. Horn antennas are commonly used as the active element in a dish antenna. The horn is pointed toward the center of the dish reflector. The use of a horn, rather than a dipole antenna, or any other type of antenna, at the focal point of the dish minimizes loss of energy, leakage, around the edges of the dish reflector. It also minimizes the response of the antenna to unwanted signals not in the favored direction of the dish. 12. State any six advantages and two disadvantages of fiber optic cable. ANS, six points of advantages 3M, two points of disadvantages 1M, advantages. Good information carrying capacity, which depends on bandwidth of the cable and fiber optical cable have much greater bandwidth. Lower loss as there is less signal attenuation over long distances. Fiber optical cable has lightweight and small size as compared to electrical cable. Optical cable does not cause interface because they do not carry the signals which cause interference. Fiber optical cables cannot be tapped as easily as electrical cables. Fiber optical cables do not carry electricity. Therefore, there is no shock hazard. Fiber optical cables are stronger than electrical cables. Materials required for fiber optical cables are easily available. They are simple in construction. Disadvantages 1. Interfacing costs. To be practical and useful, they must be connected to standard electronic facilities, which often require expensive interfaces. 2. Strength 12. Advanced Communication Sysidem Chapter 4. Answer. Optical fibers by themselves have a significantly lower tensile strength than coaxial cable. This can be improved by coating the fiber with a protective jacket of PVC. 3. Remote Electrical Power. Occasionally it is necessary to provide electrical power to remote interface or regenerating equipment.
This cannot be accomplished with the optical cable, so additional metallic cables must be included in the cable assembly. 4. Optical fiber cables are more susceptible to losses introduced by bending the cable. Bending the cable causes irregularities in the cable dimensions, resulting in a loss of signal power. 5. Specialized tools, equipment and training. Optical fiber cables require special tools to splice and repair cables and special test equipment to make routine measurements. Sometimes it is difficult to locate faults in optical cables because there is no electrical continuity.